morning, APU, and welcome to Friday Morning Reflections Chapel. My name is Pastor Stephanie, and I have the privilege and honor of getting to organize and facilitate our pastoral care and counseling here at APU. Now, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, or maybe you're still kind of getting acclimated to campus, pastoral care is one of the three main ministry opportunities uh, that is offered through the campus ministry office. Uh, the other two being discipleship groups or D groups and spiritual mentoring. And what I personally love about all three of these uh, opportunities is that they really focus on what it means to follow Jesus together and pay attention to learning and developing ways to be spiritually formed. And so all three have those same values and purposes and goals. What's fun is that they just look a little different in different seasons. And so I want to welcome you, uh, not just as a staff member, but as somebody who just really loves APU. Um, I did my undergraduate and graduate studies here, was able to serve in some student leadership opportunities, um, some staff roles. And um, so I just love what APU is, how God is continually trying to work and shape us. Um, and I just think it's such a privilege to get to hear any piece of your story as an APU student. And so I'm excited to come together today uh, and talk about something that's really um, just meaningful to me in my own life, and that's spiritual care and what that looks like in the context of community. Um, now, uh, community is hopefully something or probably something you have heard uh, in your time at APU so far. Uh, community is something that we greatly value here at APU. We believe that we are relational beings, um, that we were not created to do life alone, but that God uh, intended and gives us the gift of doing life with one another. And so that includes the times of fun and excitement and celebration, but also includes the times of grief, difficulty, challenges, um, the times when life is not so easy. And so um, before we begin, I just want to go ahead and take a moment to acknowledge a couple things. I want to acknowledge that God has done some great things uh, the past couple years in our lives, in our community. The first one that comes to mind is the fact that we're in person, um, something that just seemed unfathomable to the world a couple years ago. I've uh, enjoyed getting to walk around campus and see students sharing meals together, or having good conversations, doing homework, um, something so small but so meaningful. And what a blessing we've um, been able to have in experiencing it. On the other side, I wanna also acknowledge that the past couple years has been really challenging and difficult at the same time. Um, many of us have experienced some type of loss in the past couple of years. Um, that could be loss of a loved one, uh, loss of significant relationships. Maybe it was loss of opportunities or time, things that we just won't get back. Uh, many of us have struggled with our health, our mental health, our physical health. Uh, there's been new challenges and, and things that have come up that we have not foreseen or planned on and we're left to try to navigate them. And in, so in my own personal reflection, as I've been thinking about that, of just the highs of life and the lows of life, I've kind of uh, just come to the reality that community, both partaking in and contributing to, because it is twofold, um, seems to be really easy when life is good and fun. But I'm really kind of reflecting on what does community look like when we are struggling, when we are tired, when we are uh, feeling uh, just exhausted. What do we do when we're spiritually hurt, overwhelmed, confused, sorrowful, or tired? There's a couple things that came to mind as I was thinking about this. Um, and the first was that we deal with it ourselves. We pretend it's not there. Maybe we fill our calendars so much uh, that it keeps us just busy enough to where we're not able to think about it. Uh, we may give superficial answers when people ask us how we're doing, a quick, I'm doing great. Maybe we isolate ourselves. And I'll confess, uh, I have done all of these things. 
Uh, in fact, if I'm being completely transparent, these are still things and, and habits that if I'm not careful and I'm not paying attention to what I'm experiencing and feeling what's happening, happening inside me, I will easily lean towards. I've learned that when I choose to deal with it myself, it only ends up doing more harm than healing, prolonging that healing process. And so the second way uh, that maybe we could approach these challenges, these seasons of difficulty, is to invite God and others into that space. Hence community. We're honest about, or with God, about what we're feeling. We give honest answers when someone asks us how we're doing. Even though it's scary, we reach out for help and we say, hey, not doing too well. In almost every case, it is the harder decision, the harder route, uh, but the one that leads to healing. And also in my experience, it may not be always the ways that we want, uh, but definitely the ways that we need. So what I want to do today is look at a passage of scripture that really highlights somebody in a time of just deep distress and sorrow. But what I want us to focus on is how they choose to respond in the midst of that. And so if you have your Bible with me, I want to invite you to turn to Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 36. It says this. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And he, Jesus, said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to the point of death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. The word of the Lord. So there's so much more to this story. We could talk about it for a long time, and we'll kind of um, get back to it a little bit later. But... This is a significant place of pain and suffering for Jesus. This is taking place uh, the night that he is going to be arrested, soon put on trial, and later crucified. And what just leaves me in awe every time I think about Jesus' experience in the Garden of Gethsemane is the way that Jesus intentionally invited God and others into his pain and suffering. So let's just take a moment and consider the situation that Jesus was in. So at this point, Jesus knew that G Judas was going to betray him for 30 pieces of silver and was on his way to betray him with a kiss, something that was so meaningful in that time. He knew that all of his disciples, his closest friends, people he's been doing life with for a while would all flee to protect their own lives. He knew that Peter, even though Peter said, I'll never do it, would deny even knowing him not one but three times. Jesus here was experiencing every type of pain possible. He felt betrayed, deserted, denied. That's enough for any of us to feel some of the pain he was experiencing. In addition to kind of this emotional pain that Jesus was feeling, he also was experiencing uh, great spiritual pain. This is the first time in Jesus's life that uh, he really feels abandoned by God. He feels silenced by God, and it actually leads him to one of, I think, one of the most raw and um, relative, um, honest declarations in Scripture, and that is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so Jesus was not just bummed out. He was deeply troubled, overwhelmed with sorrow. He was experiencing pain in every way, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. This was a vulnerable space for him. But one thing is really clear, 
And that's he intentionally invited God and others into his pain and suffering. I mentioned that uh, I had the chance to come to APO as an undergrad. And um, I remember during my sophomore year, just being in a season of really struggling with my faith. Uh, I had uh, just recently experienced a, a significant loss and I was trying to work through that and process that. And um, I was angry and tired and confused and, and things that at one point in my relationship with God felt really easy and natural suddenly were so difficult. And what really helped carry me through that season was community. The Lord used um, mentors and pastors and close friends and opportunities like counseling um, to send people and give me places where I could uh, be safe and process some of these difficult things I was experiencing. Provided with me spaces um, where I could be honest, ask real questions. Uh, and most importantly, it gave me people and places just to pray with me through all of that. And so looking back, as hard as that season was, as challenging as it was, I honestly would say it was one of the most transformative because God used key people to invite me into closer relationship with him, a more honest and intimate relationship with him. And I'm so grateful for that. So we all have spiritual needs, uh, whether we like it or not, whether we are aware of it or not, we all have spiritual needs. And I'm kind of just reminded that even in seasons where life is good and things are kind of going the way I'm hoping, the way I'm planning, there's still so much inside me that the Lord wants to work through and help me and clean out and bring light to. Community is a great gift from God, especially in seasons of great pain and brokenness. So I said we'll kind of jump back into this story a little bit. If you know the story, uh, you also know that it doesn't shy away from the realities of community, which is that community isn't perfect either. Jesus invites his closest friends into this space, his most vulnerable and, and place of suffering and he asks them to stay awake and pray with them and what we learn in that story is that they are not able to they let them down they fall short uh, they don't respond the way that they need and so I don't want to shy away and I just if it's okay want to name that the, the truth is community is not perfect nor will it ever be but what's cool is that it never stopped Jesus from wanting to be part of it so I just kind of pose the question, if Jesus val valued it so much, maybe it's worth considering for us too also. Uh, and so my friends, I just have a couple questions for you this Friday morning uh, in regards to some of the things we've talked about. And the first is this, how might God be inviting you to experience spiritual care this semester? Maybe it's through pastoral counseling uh, if you're not sure kind of what that is, uh, pastoral counseling is a opportunity for students to meet one-on-one -on -one with a campus pastor for confidential counseling. I like to tell students when I meet with them that I'm not here to tell you what to do or what to believe, but really just to sit with you and pray with you and to be a, a safe place where we can work through some of these things you're experiencing together. Maybe that is processing a loss Maybe that is working through some challenges that you're experiencing with your health in whatever realm that may be. Maybe you're struggling with your faith or you have questions about God and faith. Whatever it might be, I just want to say that that's okay. We would love to meet with you and be a support to you in any way that we can. Maybe it's getting involved in intentional community this semester. There's a lot of different places, but two that come to mind are discipleship groups or mentoring. What might it look like to put yourself out there to build some new relationships that are centered around Jesus, where you guys can come together and have good conversations and work together in, in this journey of what it means to be disciples. Maybe you're well-connected to community 
and you feel like you have established relationships, that's awesome. We want you to know that we think that's amazing. We're so grateful for that. Curious to know what might it look like to intentionally carve out space for conversation and prayer in those relationships. Time where you can share uh, what God is doing in your lives. How might God be inviting you to experience spiritual care this semester? Whatever it may be, I'm confident that the Lord will honor your willingness and faithfulness and meet you where you are. The second question I have is for us as a community. And my question is this, how might God be calling us to care for one another as a community? I was really uh, just recently reminded in my own life that you never really know what people are going through or what they've gone through. You never really know what they're carrying, the burdens that they're carrying. So what might it look like to check in with people more regularly? To invite somebody to coffee or dinner? uh, To pay attention to those around you? To invite people into those relationships with you? How might God be calling us to care for one another as a community? Whatever that might be, may we do so with love and grace and compassion for one another. Uh, My friends, um, APU family, I believe that God wants to do great things in us and through our community this semester. That he wants to bring healing and restoration. And he wants to grow in relationship with us. My prayer is that we would be open, that we'd be aware of his um, presence around us, and that we would be intentional with one another as well. I would love to invite you to join me in prayer. Father God, we just declare that you are good. In every season, you are good. In times of celebration, in times of grief, we thank you for being a God who is present, uh, a God who does not fall asleep, a God who walks with us every step of the way. Lord, as we are continually learning uh, what it means to do life with you and life with others, Lord, I just pray that you would give us wisdom, you would give us guidance, um, you would give us hope, and you would give us encouragement in ways that we can do that, Lord. Would you help us um, just have the courage to acknowledge our own spiritual needs and invite others into that process, Lord, and Lord, would we just be open to inviting you in that process most importantly, Lord. Lord, give us eyes um, that see. God, give us ways that we can continue caring for one another because we are one community and one family, Lord. Uh, Lord, you are good. We declare that we we trust you. um, We are grateful for you. And we're just so thankful for the gift that you give us of community. We love you and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you soon.